So good evening to all. So I'm going to talk about the electric vehicle battery thermal management. So this is the overview of my presentation. So introduction to EV battery. So I'm going to talk about the lithium ion batteries, how it is actually working, what are the benefits and limitations when we are using the lithium ion battery. And then how the heat is actually really generated in a lithium ion battery. And then what are the different cooling methods we can actually adopt it uh, for uh, reducing the temperature of the battery. And then at last I'm going to talk about the phase change materials, how they are, you know, many uh, uh, research is going on in phase change materials, uh, specifically to the battery thermal management. So I'm going to talk about the phase change materials and then uh, what are the combined mode of cooling, you know, people they are actually using it with the phase change material, air cooling, water cooling, all those things. So this is the overview of my presentation. So we'll start with the introduction to EV battery. So most of the EV batteries are lithium ion batteries. So it has the four layer structure. You can see here, it has the four layer structure. So a positive electrode, which is actually called as cathode here. It, it contains the uh, lithium cobalt oxide or lithium manganese oxide, whatever may be the case. And then here you have aluminum file which is there as a uh, thin aluminum uh, file as a current collector. And then the negative electrode which is called as, you know, air node. And it, here the current collector is actually thin copper file which is specifically contains the graphite. And then between this anode and cathode, you have a separator, which is a polymeric material. It is a porous polymeric material. And then an electrolyte medium is actually there. So it is a liquid lithium salt in an organic solvent. They kept it here. So lithium ion battery, the specific peculiarity or specific things about the lithium ion battery is it is a rechargeable and it has the very high uh, energy density. So in this case of lithium ion battery, the lithium ions move from the negative electrode to the positive electrode, say from the anode to cathode. So during the discharge cycle, the ions, positive ions are moving from anode to cathode. The electrons are moving outside uh, circuit, external circuit, where your say electric motor is actually connected. So in the case of charging, the reverse is generally happening. Here the graphite is used in the anode. So graphite is a material which can actually absorb more quantity of lithium ion. So that is why they are actually using the graphite as the anode. And this is the equation which shows the uh, discharging characteristic of the EV battery. So you have a lithium and carbon, it is nothing but graphite, C6. So the ion is taken, uh, ion is coming out and then electron is actually moving out from the external circuit. So ion will move from the uh, you know, anode to cathode during the discharging of the battery. So you can see in the case of your cathode side, you have the reduction which is actually happening where your lithium ion combines with this cobalt oxide and then electron is flowing from the outside circuit. It forms. So whenever it is discharging, lithium ions move from the anode, that means the graphite collector and then it moves towards the cathode. It forms the lithium cobalt oxide. Your ions, negative ions moving outside or electrons moving outside the circuit, so you will get the current. So during the charging, exactly opposite is actually happening. So polarity changes, this is the major thing when compared to your conventional battery, how the polarity is actually changing. So when you, when you see that during discharge cycle, so your ions are moving here from the uh, anode to cathode through the polymer Remember, and then electrolyte, it is a lithium salt with the organic solvent and your current is actually flowing, that means your electrons are flowing through the external circuit. Here, your lithium ion movement and then your electron movement, 
you got the gobal oxide here it will form the lithium gobal oxide so during the discharge during the charge charging exactly you can see the tapestry is actually happening we are connecting negative here and then positive here so because of the uh, potential voltage which you are giving so the charging is actually happening during charging the lithium ions will move from here to there and then it will deposit so the polarity is generally changed during the charging and discharging generally you no know, positive negative uh, electrode only we should call in the case of uh, the lithium ion battery you cannot say cathode anode kind of thing but we usually correct as positive electrode and then negative electrode even though many books are you know following different notations so we can see the types of lithium ion batteries so uh, small cylindrical batteries are actually there and large cylindrical batteries generally the large cylindrical batteries are used in the electric vehicles and then you have pouch kind of uh, lithium ion batteries are there pouch cells are there how many of you have seen pouch cells where it is actually used can anyone uh, uh, tell that so we can interact sometimes pouch cells so in the laptop and all they usually have the pouch cells and the small prismatic kind of things is actually available pouch cells are used in the laptops and big uh, calculators all those places they have the pouch cells and then you got the prismatic the, the prismatic uh, arrangement see the both large cylindrical and prismatic batteries are actually used in the electric vehicle battery so you can see how they have made the electrodes positive electrode and you have a separator then you have the negative electrode and then they will make it like a prismatic kind of thing. so they will make different uh, layers cells and then they will uh, connect together and then you will get the required amount of voltage and the current in the case of cylindrical also you can see it is wound like this so manufacturing of cylindrical cell is actually easier when compared to this prismatic cells of course here the space is also less so you will get uh, for a given volume you will get the more capacity with the cylindrical batteries so what are the major requirements of the ev batteries requirements so it should give the you know maximum energy content that means it directly relates your electric vehicle uh, range so and it should give full power even with the deep discharge so the, your full power actually uh, decides your maximum capacity of your vehicle so in order to get the long range and uh, so higher uh, power running so it should actually give the better energy content so apart uh, when compared to other batteries so lithium ion batteries are actually giving the full power and the long range so that's why we are actually using this lithium ion battery and routinely receives a full charge it should get quickly receive the full charge so it always needs a battery management system it's not easy when compared to other batteries you can uh, charge it and leave it so always you need a battery management system and it needs of course a thermal management system the temperature control all those things typical voltage generally greater than 300 volts people are actually using so in the electric vehicles and then capacity of the battery is generally 20 to uh, 60 kilowatt hours so even you know greater capacities people are using with the high end cars and all so and typical discharge current up to c rate continuous and 3g peak for short durations so generally c rate means charging rate so what is the capacity of the battery same say i have a 20 uh, amp hour battery so if i give a 20 amps charging rate it, one hour it needs for fully charging my battery if 3c rate means i am actually increasing the current to three times say 60 amps i am giving so within 20 minutes my battery is getting charged within the short duration so this can be possible only with the lithium ion batteries of course other batteries are also there but lithium ion batteries are withstanding this much peak uh, charging rates and then must it must accept the very high repetitive pulsed charging currents greater than 5g if regenerative braking is used whenever you are using a battery the battery is running your electric vehicle motor so when the brake is applied so what will happen to the motor motor need not run so the motor will act as already motor is rotate rotating suddenly we are applying your vehicle brake so my motor will act as a regenerator 
whatever already the rotation is there it will uh, when it becomes a generator it will produce a current frequently we are actually uh, pressing our pedal for braking in such cases frequently the motor becomes the generator when you are using a regenerative braking that means it should be capable of uh, what you can say uh, accept the multiple charging with a uh, you know that high rates so these kind of uh, requirements are um, important when you are selecting a battery for the electric vehicle so the, only the lithium ion batteries are satisfying you know all the things of course many other batteries are also under research but they are actually much costly so the advantage of lithium ion battery is actually high energy density so for a given mass of the battery it can actually give a, a very high energy it it directly uh, what you can say influence the range of the operation of the vehicle when compared to other batteries so when you are using a lithium ion battery it has more energy density so you can go long range with the vehicle so that is why it is actually preferable and it does not need prolonged priming so when it is new you need not charge frequently and all whenever you know that uh, yeah a long uh, charging is not needed when you are using a, when it is new and the relatively low self discharge so when you keep our car back and all say during the uh, rainy season or if you are going vacation in 2 to 3 months and all when you keep your uh, car batteries it itself will discharge basically at you know cold countries and cold climate regions so such kind of things are actually very less when uh, in the lithium ion battery and it needs low maintenance so that is why people are preferring lithium ion battery for the electric vehicle applications so the disadvantages you can say it needs always a protection circuit not like your conventional led dash battery or other things subject to aging generally the life of the electric vehicle battery is actually 5 to 6 years So afterwards, its capacity will come down to 80 percent of the maximum capacity. You cannot use it for the electric vehicle, but however, you can use it, use those batteries for the other application. So this is the major disadvantage. Even though it is costlier, it cannot the life of the battery cannot be extended beyond six to seven years. And of course, that battery can be used for different applications, but you cannot use it for the electric vehicle application. and uh, always you have you know transportation restrictions are there it is expensive to manufacture so tesla is actually giving the better uh, lithium ion batteries the reason is actually they have the lithium ore factory they have their own lithium ore factories uh, in the australia and other countries so that's why they are able to provide the you know that survive in the electric vehicle market when compared to other countries so we got to buy the lithium ion batteries from outside but they are, they are making their own lithium ion batteries in the how the lithium ore company itself so you can see the lithium ion battery comparison for different vehicles renault tg hyundai ionic similarly vw go tesla the capacity is actually shown so you know that from low capacity to very high capacity you know the vehicles are actually available so higher the capacity always you know that you will get the higher the range and the higher the power so now when compared to other batteries how the temperature is actually affects our lithium ion battery so the chemical reaction rates so generally uh, affects the temperature more the chemical reaction so more the temperature rise so operating temperature range of the battery is actually 20 to 55 degrees celsius 55 is the worst case battery will fail generally at 55 but we got to maintain say around 45 degrees celsius the electric vehicle batteries for getting the you know that better performance so when the chemical reaction rates are very high can anyone uh, tell please so in a battery when the reaction rates are very high when it can happen anyone when it can happen when discharge rate is so high sir yes when discharge rate is so high say i am driving my vehicle in a you know that uh, hill area i want more torque so my motor will take more current where my motor will take more current anyone it will take from the battery all of some say i want to go in a high, uh, highway at very high speeds so suddenly i am accelerating my motor needs more current within a short duration it will take from the battery in such situations you know that you know 
what is happening exactly inside the lithium ion battery ions are actually moving when more of the ions are moving and then they will collide each other so the uh, heat then it will thermal it will get fire out of it so generally when the discharge rate is high suppose when i am using a charging a fast charging kind of thing so in a lithium ion battery if you are using it 3 to 4 hours you got to charge it for generally a two wheeler cars and all you know it may range from 3 to 6 hours 7 hours and all depends upon the battery charge at the car to you are when compared to your uh, what you can say a uh, normal charging i am giving more current to the battery so in such situations the ion movement will be faster fast charging so suddenly i am giving more current to the battery so that i am reducing my time of charging so i i, I don't want to wait in such situ situations whether the temperature will increase or not anyone please can you think and tell during fast charging during fast charging whether heat will generate or not yes sir it will generate yeah we are fast charging also heat will generally generate similarly fast recharge also heat will generate so because of the higher reaction rate ions are moving faster they are colliding each other so automatically heat is generated inside so it will build up a very high nearby element also it will go so automatically it will get affected if the temperature is rising faster and much higher the battery will explode or fire accident will happen and you can say the operating temperature range of the battery should be 20 to 55 degrees celsius it should be that then only you will get a better performance otherwise your life of the battery is question mark second thing is you won't get the uh, better performance you won't get the long range and cell to cell temperature difference generally the battery is made up of many different cells are combined together so the cell to cell temperature difference should be less than 5 degree celsius so these are all the constraint with these constraints only the lithium ion battery can actually give a better performance so at very low temperature what is actually happening so at say less than 0 degree celsius i am in a himalayas or uti some cold climate regions canada other places i am there, there. polar regions aerospace uh, places and all if, if i am using the battery so at very low temperature range you will get a heavy energy loss so heat will actually move from you know that so from inside battery to outside of course you will get the more loss and generally if you want to maintain the temperature 20 to 55 degrees celsius in the cold climate you got to use a heater and sometimes if the temperature is little higher then 0 degree celsius you can use an insulation to protect your back so generally in uh, you know in canada and other countries where it go during uh, during the cold uh, california and all cold uh, situations even water becomes ice in such situations you got to use the heating application heating and insulation but in india most of the place it doesn't do care but when the temperature reaches greater than 55 degree celsius what will happen is exponentially the temperature will increase automatically the sudden abrupt in temperature rise if it goes greater than 400 degrees celsius that is called as thermal runaway so you will get the sudden energy losses so you will get a hydrocarbon gas formation everything will be there so battery will explode so short circuiting since you are cathode anode both will you know that get short circuited it will get explode so that is what is actually happening at the very high temperature based on this so we can say that we got to maintain the temperature of the battery within the limits that should be 20 to 55 degrees celsius but it is 55 is the worst case generally people are trying to maintain 45 degree celsius and cell to cell temperature difference should be less than 5 degree celsius you can see that battery power versus uh, temperature so, so how much this is the 100 uh, percentage power which is that when you maintain 22 you can see around 40 degree celsius it can perform well at very low temperature so your performance is very less similarly at very high temperature also performance is actually very less inside the battery atomic level changes are actually happening so ion movement is getting hindered during a high temperature as well as low temperature conditions that is why you got to maintain the battery between 20 to 55 degrees celsius why the heat what are the factors which, which governs the heat generation in the lithium ion battery fast or rapid charging as we have discussed already hot ambient temperature can anyone tell the temperature of us during summer in chennai anyone 
it can reach even 40 degrees am i right 38 to 40 yes sir yes sir yeah, 40 degree 40 yeah, yeah, so you know during the summer most of the battery accidents are happening say in vellore and then in chennai hyderabad pune many places you can see summer only the battery accident in two wheelers you might have seen in the papers and all so what the ambient temperature is 40 degree further when you operate your battery further the temperature will get rise so that is why during the uh, hot climate conditions so we have to have a better cooling system similarly internal resistant like i i squared r but that is actually less but depends upon your uh, temperature raise uh, this internal resistant will also increase and sudden discharge high current requirements say suddenly i want to accelerate my vehicle or say i want to uh, what you can say uh, climb away uh, climb in a hill way i need more torque my motor requires more current in such situation so you will get the uh, you know that more heat generation say is closer to terminal suppose i have a battery terminals is there positive terminal and negative terminal both are actually there i am taking the wire from there and then i am connecting to the motor with all these other components so whenever the motor requires high current so the cell which is closer to the terminal is quickly delivering the you know that current so that is why they are getting always you know that damage quickly heat generation is more when compared to other uh, cells so blockage in cooling channel already i have the cooling system some blockage due to uh, salt forming any other things happening some accident or such kind of things happening means so my cooling system will get fail so automatically my temperature will rise similarly suppose cooling fan pump is not working we are using a liquid cooling system in such situation the heat generation will be much higher so this you know that always lead to uh, what you can say more heat generation so whenever you are accelerating generally the more current is taken by the uh, motor from the battery so more uh, ion movement so heat is actually generated large amount of heat then one battery cell is getting short circuited and generated so it will continue to other batteries since both are interconnected so automatically you will get the uh, you know the total ba- battery failure may have seen you know that many different uh, things so how many of you have seen that uh, in which condition the battery is getting uh, you know what you can say accidents happen most of the cases in uh, you know velur as well as here in chennai and then pune hyderabad you can see the diagram by seeing the diagram itself you can understand in chennai i think uh, one day night they have charged they have kept it in charging and then uh, in between the night it was exploded am i right in velur also similar kind of things so mostly the when the vehicle is running the battery heat is not uh, the heat is uh, actually not uh, particularly in two wheelers when the battery uh, vehicle is running they are they want to reduce the cost so we don't have much very big cooling system and all in the two wheeler but cars they always have but you know that in the uh, two wheelers we don't have that is why the accidents are actually happening specifically the your climate temperature and then during charging not specifically during the movement of the so different cooling methods are actually there forced air convection you might have known about that forced air convection i'm using a fan cooling fan so i am using a duct inside that uh, battery modules were kept so the air will go and take the heat and then it will go out liquid cooled convection i am using a liquid surrounding it and then the same liquid i am reusing it after cooling by using another air cooler or a radiator this is actually liquid cooling kind of thing so most of your tesla models and all they got the liquid cooling things when come back to air cooling system liquid cooling systems are efficient can anyone tell the reason you might have studied uh, most of you the uh, this thing um, uh, heat transfer liquid cooling is better for car uh, batteries anyone uh, so more, more conductivity yes it has more thermal conductivity it has more specific heat cp so it can take more amount of heat when compared to yeah so that is why you know that people are actually using the liquid cooling but however you got to take care about the pathway of the liquid which is flowing through the battery and refrigerant cooled convection so when compared to liquid cooling your uh, heat removal rate is faster and then much higher in refrigerant 
cooling system like your uh, you know we have a vapor compression system kind of thing which are used in your freezer household application even in your vehicles ac we are using no similar kind of cooling system they are adapting it for the electric vehicle batteries you can see the bmw and the audi cars and all audi electric vehicles bmw electric vehicles and all uh, people are using no high end vehicles they are using the refrigerant cooling uh, you know refrigerant cooled uh, systems for the battery and people are you know many people are trying with the phase change metal research is actually going on of course many of the studies are actually under trial so apart from the combined mode out of this combined mode of phase change material with forced air phase change material with liquid cooled convection many combined modes are, are also there so forced air cooling some of the cases i will show that so people they have tried with you know this uh, inside that battery pack is actually there it is just uh, you know that outside envelope with the fan location they have kept it out of this can anyone tell which location is actually better for battery cooling anyone out of this five locations but i have kept in the first location fan at the bottom outside in the other uh, place other end i have kept the outlet cooled so in the second case you know that i have kept the fan at the top my outlet is actually at the other end down bottom third case you can see in the axial direction i have kept it fourth case i have kept it here the fan there will take a path a bend and then it will come to the other end so another case i have kept the path like this here the air is entering and then it is going the other end in the front direction and back end so which one can be a better configuration for a better cooling can anyone think and tell which one can be a better coolant or you can say the arrangement for better cooling anyone so at this when the yes and see the cooling methods forced liquid cooling many people they have actually tried with the liquid cooling how the channels are actually looking you can see here these the you know that channels the red color round which is actually there how they have actually made that section it is actually shown a thin channel is actually there you can see that thin channel which is actually there through that only actually liquid is actually flowing and then you know that uh, micro channel you can see here can you able to see that micro channel around with the diameter small diameter a small hole is there like that many channels are actually there so they uh, through that you know the liquid will go and then it will take the heat quickly and then you will get it so here you can see inlet is here outlet is actually here so the heat the liquid will always you know that rise since it is a small hole the capillary effect will also be there and then you will get a better heat removal right so people have actually they have tried for individual uh, batteries they have used a each channel and then they will combine together at the bottom as well as the top so these are all the dimensions if you really interested i will show the reference you can actually go through that so this is actually uh, the the same liquid is actually taken to the heat exchanger like a small radiator kind of thing and it is getting cooled again it is getting reused so you can see the other different arrangement how the people actually they have done it with the uh, for the battery cooling called helical duct you can see different helical ducts they have used it the green color uh, ducts are helical ducts right with that and then the second uh, surrounded by the uh, surrounding the battery and the aluminum block with curved surface you can see that these are all aluminum blocks you got the curved surface you can see this curved surface with the holes inside uh, they are sending the you know that water similarly you know that each side if you have a prism these are all cylindrical cells we have prismatic kind of cells and all they have tubes they have arranged like the zigzag kind structure they have used it through that liquid they will send it and then the, the cooling is done here you can see serpentine flow field structure you now many different turns are there it covers most of the surface and compared to this this one is actually giving better result a rectangular ambulary plane also they are using so it is coming from each and every place they are using a different channel not the same liquid is actually flowing different uh, liquids are actually flowing so auto automatically you know you will get the better cool here the same liquid is flow, covering all the areas but here here one one more one liquid will come the same name of the liquid but you know the 
team is different team will get a better some better in strategies it will reduce the friction loss all those things and all so you will get the uh, less pumping power for the given cooling effect people they have actually optimized like that you know different uh, arrangement the people they have done it for you know that cooling these things cooling the battery i think the stop is not moving i'll okay anyway i will can you able to see the title you are not able to see thing but the facing metal that uh, title is that uh, side is yeah. there sir yeah you are able to see that yes sir yeah okay. yes, we, we so, so we are seeing the liquid cooling and air cooling uh, different uh, methods now you can see the pgm pgm means phase change material phase change means liquid uh, the change of uh, the phase of the material from the liquid to vapor as well as solid to liquid generally you know that uh, wax paraffin wax and all solid to liquid it will become liquid when you heat such kind of materials people they have actually tried it with the pgm you can see the uh, cell temperature versus tank whenever you are using uh, without pgm so you know that so the temperature is raised to a maximum level when you are using a liquid when you are using a pgm so always you know that melting or you know that vaporization are happening at the constant temperature even though it absorbs more amount of heat its temperature is not actually changing my phase change for any say from water to steam is happening at constant pressure and temperature similarly phase change for solid to liquid also happening at constant pressure and temperature so it absorbs more amount of heat also when compared to your sensible heat like when heat is always more when compared to sensible heat so that is why when you are using a pgm always you can maintain a lower temp temperature even though you are transferring more amount of heat when compared to your conventional liquid or air cooling so you can see people they have done with different cooling systems you can see pgm and copper foam they have kept it you can see inside this is the pgm and copper foam between the layers they have kept it copper foam for thermal better thermal conductivity and then you know the pgm is for taking the more amount of heat so only pgm also is not advisable you got to use different foam kind of thing since it has to take the heat maintain the low temperature and quickly you got to discharge the heat that's why they are using the different foam conditions also the pgm similarly they are using the pgm expanded graphite epoxy resin composite different composite materials also they got tried this is the top view of the cylindrical battery the black color things is actually the uh, epoxy resin composite so, so many intensive researches are actually happening throughout the world So we have done with some experiments with the simple experiments and CFD work with the phase change materials. Okay, these are all the you know generally many different phase change materials people they have tried it with you know that uh, paraffin, graphene, uh, multi-wall carbon nanotube kind of thing, and then similarly other metal matrix, ethylene glycol, copper mesh, and uh, you know the paraffin with the aluminium foam, copper foam, many things they have actually tried it. So we have tried with OM35, one of the organic phase change material. We have tried with along with the paraffin wax, a mixture of OM35 and paraffin wax. We have tried, and then we have uh, of course we have studied about also GR44 and RT50. These are all commercial names of the you know, that uh, phase change materials. You can see the melting temperature when compared to other materials. So the melting temperature for OM35 is actually around 35 degree. We have uh, thought that. Paraffin wax, even it is melting at 40 degree, it can be used for safety purpose, but we cannot maintain with the temperature well below 45 degree Celsius. That is why we are we have gone to the uh, OM35 and the paraffin wax combination. You can see the thermal conductivity; all those things are actually given. OM35 and paraffin wax, and compared to this RT50 and all, very less. Latent heat also is much higher with the OM35. This is latent heat as a actual low when compared to this. So when we combine these two things, we have thought that uh, we will get a better results. Of course, you got the flash point, fire point, everything is actually shown. So we have combined, you know, that OM35 and then paraffin wax 50-50 percentage by mass. Similarly, paraffin wax and OM35 60-40. We want to try with the narrow region where exactly 50-50 and then 60-40. More paraffin, less OM. That is it. So we have melted these PCMs and then uh, stirred 
and then afterwards we will use a sonic agent with ultrasonic agent for better mixing and all and then we will sample it. So we have made a small experimental setup which will actually uh, represent our battery by using a heat. So we have kept a, you know that uh, power source and regulator with the power supply for the heater, a strip heater we have used it and then we have used the acrylic tank and then we have kept uh, this place the phase change material. We have measured the temperature at the different locations of the you know that phase change materials. You can see this is the thing T1, T2 and then T3 and then T4. This is the top uh, place where we have measured it. So these are all the dimensions where these thermocouples were located. So we have used a heater capacity of 150 watt which represents uh, you know that a single battery. So we, before that we have done with the CFD simulations. You can see that uh, when times at 0 minute and 30 minutes with the given heater input, heat flux condition, 60 minute and 90 minute. So most are, mostly you can say the top portion is getting melted when compared to you know that bottom portion. So your liquid fraction is actually higher at the topmost layer. The reason is whenever heat is supplied, it will always flow in the upper direction, not with the you know that lower direction. That is why you know that the shape is coming like that. More liquids are liquid is there in the top, and then uh, bottom you will have the less liquid fraction. These are all the solid pattern. Blue color is actually solid, zero liquid, solid PGM material. So we have done with the acrylic tank with the experiment. You can see here similar kind of pattern we have got it, but it, it is not exactly giving since CFD is and uh, you know different than your practical case. Many losses all these things are actually there. You can see the trend is actually matching, but it is not uh, actually the quantitatively we have done it. Only the qualitative matching we have actually done. It. So with that uh, we we have actually taken the temperature uh, with respect to time say 120 minutes, around 110 minutes we have taken. So our 50-50 paraffin experimental and then simulation we are showing it. it. It is actually maintaining the temperature well below 46 degree Celsius. When compared to you know, the 60-40 paraffin. The reason is more the paraffin, so more the melting point. So it allows the more temperature rise. So apart from that, we have tried with heavy uh, ambient conditions, say 45 degree Severe ambient conditions, generally 40 degree, but we have chosen uh, 45 degree uh, higher climate condition by using a you know that uh, climate chamber. So you can see the 45 degree Celsius higher temperature. We have kept our total setup inside uh, with the uh, given same heater uh, input, everything we have maintained. So you can see that with respect to time, how the temperature is actually varying at the T2 point, the topmost point, how it is actually varying. This is for 60 40, and then this is for you know that 50 50. So 50 uh, percentage and 50 percentage uh, paraffin wax and 50 percentage RM35, which actually maintains the temperature well below, even as worst condition, the temperature can be maintained well below 55 degree Celsius when you are using this uh, PGM of combination of 50 50 paraffin wax and the OM35. And we have seen for the very cold climate condition. For minus 20 degree, how it is getting? Affected, you can see this is the minus 20 degree around the chamber. We have kept it at minus 20 degree ambient condition. Say, so, you know, that within that uh, things for uh, only uh, you know, that after what you can say two hours only, it reaches the temperature 40. So, that means you can actually run your vehicle with this kind of cooling system even two hours if you want. So it's much of the things, but it reaches a better uh, temperature. So after 20 minutes, kind of things. But of course, you are using heater, all those things. But uh, we would like to check how the temperature is even at very uh, low temperature, minus 20 degrees Celsius. That's what we have tried with the same environmental chamber. But the temperature was set at minus 20 degree Celsius. Say so after you can say around two hours only, it reaches the temperature of uh, 38 degree kind of range. And we have done with the cyclic loading also. We have uh, uh, switched on the heater for 8 hours. Again, it was switched off for 8 hours. Another 8 hours, it was switched off, switched on. Like that, we have actually tried it. The temperature was actually shown here. So for, uh, you know, that uh, T1, T2 and then T3 is actually there. So for uh, different conditions, we have tried it with even with cyclic loading also. 
So it won't, uh, you can see the eight hours. Eight hours we are actually switching on. The temperature is not raising much with the EC. For a best condition of OM35 and paraffin max 50 is 50 degree. So apart from that, we have done some of the simulation studies also. You can see that uh, we have done, uh, we have uh, given the data of different cities like Chennai, Delhi, and then uh, what you call the Bangalore, different uh, climate and like humidity and then uh, temperature, all other uh, data we have taken. And then we have actually uh, simulated by using the CFD software. With that, we have seen that you can see this is for the passive cell cooling with the average temperature at various speeds is actually so here active cooling. So can anyone tell the difference between passive cooling and active cooling? Passive cooling and active cooling. Active cooling, we are using fan. Am I right or wrong? Active cooling, we are using fan. Passive cooling, we are not using fan. So we are trying with the different the vehicle velocity itself use the better airflow. So you can see here passive cooling at 40 km per hour vehicle with the different data like Delhi, uh, Mumbai and then Chennai and all we are trying. This is a sample data which we are actually showing it. So at lower speed of 40 km per hour, the temperature rise of the battery is at high. You can see here. At a, when the waiting speed is 60 km per hour and 80 km per hour, the temperature rise of the battery is actually very less. So in the case of passive cooling, I am not using any fan. When the vehicle is moving, the air is coming due to the flow of the, uh, the flow of the air is actually due to the flow of the vehicle. I have a passage in, in front, it is actually coming. So active cooling, I am using a fan. So at different speed, we have actually tried it. At 40 km, 60 km, and 80 km per hour. So you can see here my temperature actually comes down for the 40 km per hour speed. But when compared to you know these two graphs, can you able to observe any temperature difference between passive and active cooling at higher speeds, say 60 and 80 km per hour? These two graph curve in this first graph and then these two curves in the second graph. Is there any major difference? Anyone? No major difference is actually there, right? So only this 40 km per hour, you have a major difference between the active and passive cooling. So that means our active cooling is required whenever the vehicle is running at the lower speed. Since the airflow is also coming at very low speed, that is not sufficient to maintain the battery temperature. So that is why whenever you are running your vehicle at very high speed, even though the motor is taking more power and battery is getting heated, the airflow is also much higher. So that you know that you 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 need not have the you need not worry about the cooling thing. But whenever you are running at lower speeds, so airflow is also very less. So your cooling system is not very efficient. So from this graph, you can always we can always conclude that our active cooling. That means active cooling requires the power. You got to run your air fan. So for airflow, you are using a fan. So the power for the fan is actually given from the battery only. Battery only supplies the power to the fan. Extra power is needed from the battery to run the fan. So by seeing this curve, so at very high speed, you need not switch on your fan. You leave it, the vehicle velocity itself sufficient to get the better cooling. But at very low speeds of 40 km per hour, so you need to switch on your fan so that your temperature can be bring down to the lower level. This is about you know that velocity vector which has which is actually shown here. You can see at very high speed, back side of the battery pack, you have different you know that whirling motions, all those things are there. This is the battery pack. You can see that smaller thing is actually battery pack. And we have a duct also, we have kept it inside fan, everything is there. The small blue color thing is actually the duct. I think we have done, you know, different simulations and all, but time is, uh, you know, short. So I am showing, uh, you know, that short and sweet result. Based on our uh, experiments, we have found out that 50 is 50 combination of paraffin wax and OM35 is actually sufficient for maintaining the lower temperature of the battery. It is the ideal candidate for better uh, cooling system. 
and extreme environment condition also it can maintain the temperature well below the uh, you know that uh, operating uh, safety condition of the battery and active when when we compare the active and passive cooling that means cooling without fan cooling with fan so at lower speed when you run the vehicle so always you need a active cooling that means you got to switch on your fan otherwise you need not switch on your fan that is what is also our findings so combined you know that mode of cooling you know different people they have tried with that you can see air cooling plus water cooling liquid cooling pgm plus air all these thing many research is actually going on you can find out many articles in the science there pgm plus water cooling heat pipe assisted pgm since quickly you know the heat is getting uh, dissipated when you are using a heat pipe assisted but cost and all you got to work out and then cooling by boiling organic liquids and pressurized propane and all but these are all commercially not easy propane is a, you know that uh, quickly it can get catch fire so we cannot use much these kind of things and liquid ammonia based cooling like refrigerant based with kind of thing pgm capsules people are actually instead of keeping the pgm surrounding the battery they use a capsule kind of thing they fill up the pgm inside the capsule and then the capsule is actually spread out surrounding the battery that is one of the thing where uh, the pgm is not leaking and you will get a uh, you know that uh, simple system you can fill up the pgm capsules uh, between the gap of the battery so it is a, a, you know one of the efficient method also, but you have to take care about the air flow all these things only pgm capsules can be used and then thermoelectric liquid these are all research based but mostly you know that air cooling water cooling uh, is actually currently used you know many of the uh, it is not water only many other liquid they have tried tesla and all uh, you know that refrigerant based cooling or ammonia based uh, not ammonia but refrigerant based cooling uh, rd cars and then bmw electric bikes and all the very high end cars they are actually using it. all these capsules thermoelectric and all under research only so n gas pcm with porous media is getting attention nowadays people many people they are actually trying these are all the, you know that different cooling methods uh, people are actually doing research so you can see tesla model 3 cooling system you know they have covered all the cooling system they have interconnected all the cooling system you can see traction motor oil coolant exchanger similar battery is getting heated similarly motor is also getting heated so, so you have the cooling system for the motor which is connected to the you know that uh, air uh, what sorry battery cooling system also you can see the liquid lines are actually coming so you were battery cooling system and then motor cooling system similarly vehicle ac all these things are actually interconnected so and then you got the heat exchanger for uh, you know that uh, to reuse the same liquid so they are actually done with some optimum studies and all, like hot ac fluid cold ac fluid cool and fluid everything they have actually combined the energy management system and they have actually uh, done a better uh, solution to reduce the energy of the electric vehicle ultimately when come back to your ic engine vehicle if energy for electric vehicle is high means always you need a higher cost battery or higher capacity battery so everything will come finally to the battery that's why it is actually very important people are actually trying to reduce the energy consumption so that is why different cooling system they have actually combined it if you want really to know about that you can watch this video in the youtube So these are all the references. Many of the papers also got taken, and many diagrams. I thank all the, you know, the researchers, those who are working in this area. So any questions, uh, please you can always uh, ask.